Um, I'm recording. Good morning, everyone. Uh, thank you for joining us today for Tech Tuesday. Um, my name is Vanessa Puig, and today we're going to be talking about Data Core. Um, we have Alice Chin, who's our Data Core manager, on hand from the Wood Library. Alice, thanks so much for joining us today. Yeah, thank you so much, Vanessa. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you so much for coming out today to learn about Data Core. Um, I'm Alice Chin, and I've been part of the Data Core team for a little over three years right now. Um, well, yeah, for a little over three years. Um, I believe Peter Oxley is going to be on the session too, um, and, and he'll be available to answer any questions. Also, um, largely of where Data Core is um, is today is largely in part of Peter's leadership over um, the last couple of years. So, um, I guess we can go ahead and get kicked off and get started. Yeah, and just as a reminder, um, what Alice said about Peter helping to answer questions if he's able to come on. If you do have questions during today's session, um, I do have everyone on mute since we have quite a few people registered for today's session. But if you do have questions during Alice's presentation, please feel free to put them in the chat. We'll be taking short breaks so that we can uh, make sure to answer your questions. And I'm also recording the session um, so that I can send it to you afterwards. Um, since you've registered, I have your email address, so expect that email later today. Um, Alice, do you want me to pull up the poll? Uh, yeah, that would be great. Um, I just wanted to get like a little feel of um, who's kind of in the audience today. And we have just a very short poll. All we right, so everybody on their for, screen could be seeing you know, two really um, short questions. So it looks like we've got mostly staff and nobody so far has used data core before. Okay, great. Well, this is the right session for, for everyone then, so. All right, I'm gonna end that poll. Go ahead, Alice. Great, all right. So, all right, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna close out this poll here, okay. Today, um, these are kind of the items I'd like to go over today. Um, I'm going to start by giving an overview of what Data Core is, um, giving you some background and some over general functionality of the system. Um, I'm going to go ahead um, and move into a live demo of the Data Core environment of creating a new Data Core project if this uh, is the service that would meet um, some of your research needs. And um, finally, go over some of the additional features that um, we are currently working on um, in the Data Core team. Uh, we'll wrap up with any questions. And as, as um, Vanessa mentioned, feel free to enter questions into the chat, and I'll make sure to break um, throughout the presentation um, to answer any questions that there might be. So, all right. So an overview of Data Core. Um, I just wanted to um, highlight this white paper that was published a few years back on Data Core. Um, don't worry, I'm not going to make everyone read this tiny um, small print <laughs> article here. But um, basically, I'll, I'll try to summarize it as best I can. Um, a few years ago, um, there was a group of WCM leaders that published an article for AMIA. Um, addressing the need for having a secure environment that would allow researchers to perform analysis and <clears throat> work with um, data sets that contain sensitive um, information. Um, the, these data sets could include, you know, le electronic health records that contain a lot of PHI, you know, payer claim, um, clinical trial data, um, these sorts of data sets often have strict security requirements associated with it. And this paper basically addresses Wild Cornell's solution to um, providing this type of environment. And the solution is um, what we call the data core. Um, so what exactly is data core? Um, data core is a secure, scalable computing and storage environment where users can share access to a collection of data sets and process the data with various software tools while meeting appropriate regulatory requirements to protect the data. Um, 
I'm uh, going to try, hopefully my goal in this presentation is try to make this a little bit more lively than just a, a set of words and a definition of what data core is. Um, as I said, it's not uncommon that there are just uh, numerous security requirements associated with different data sets. Um, what Data Core does is it provides this infrastructure and it allows users to collaborate and work together where the alternative would be just having a standalone machine like in an office locked away that's not connected to the internet um, that meets the requirements of you know, storing this data. So this, um, this service allows you to you know, collaborate and work in a secure environment um, um, for, for the entire team to be able to access. Um, kind of kind of looking how data core is set up. So data core, as you can see, kind of that red box and in, in kind of the upper left here, resides within the WCM network. Um, it is housed on virtual machines, which are hosted over in the Belfort building. Um, and that's where they are. In order to gain access to um, data core, um, whether you're a user on the network or outside the network, data core can be accessed anywhere from anywhere. You would go through my apps, um, which provides the security and authentic authentication to get into the data core environment. Um, kind of other things just to wanna note in this kind of overall structure, you can see the data core team over to the right um, where it says data core, curatorial and operational staff, um, we basically act as a gateway um, to for what goes in and out of the data core environment. Um, users can access the data core. Um, however, it's the data core team that kind of um, administers the data transfers, whether you're either getting data from a data provider um, or whether you're holding the data on a, a piece of physical media, um, we would, facilitate that transfer of data inside the secure area uh, within data core. Um, we also have tight controls over what goes in and out of the data core, mainly what goes out of the data core because um, we need to ensure that sensitive inf information does not, um, uh, does not leave unless it's permitted by the data governance. So that's kind of a quick overview of um, of how where the framework is set up. Um, some of the key features of data core, the data core, um, the data core operates in a Windows 2016 environment. Um, we, uh, we are able to kind of scale whatever your computing and storage needs are based on your project. So if you're working with a large data set with millions of records, we can um, provide the right number of CPUs to be able to process that data. Um, also, we could um, help you know, scale how much storage space you need, whether you need just a few gigabytes or uh, some terabytes of data. So we have um, file shares um, that can be customized um, based on your needs. Um, as I mentioned before, um, log gaining access um, to data core is through my apps. Um, and we use your, um, the Wild Cornell centrally managed login using your seaweed. Um, if you're working on a research project that has um, collaborators outside of Cornell, um, a seaweed can be requested for external users. So um, we try to make it um, available for you know cross uh, cross organ or, or cross organizations that um, you might be um, collaborating with Columbia or NYU um, on a project. So um, we would be able to provide access to that research team. Um, access is through my apps, which I mentioned before, and um, data transfers um, are all kind of managed and um, apply and follow any data governance rules that, um, are, that surround the data or that govern the data. Um, at the end of a project, we also have the ability to archive the data if the governance allows or archive your project. So if you have a project that you've worked on and it's closed down, but you think you might um, want to use it um, like in a future study, uh, we have the ability to um, sorry about that. Uh, we have the ability to uh, store the data, your project data securely. Um, so those are some of the features. Um, sorry, let me go back a slide. 
All right, so data core, um, data core provides a consistent interface and access. So within each project, all the users see the same applications, your same directories where your data is stored, stored in your same project environments. You have a shared space where you can collaborate with the rest of your projects, um, project um, team members. And also you have a private work area where you can work and, um, and again, it's all in this secure, um, secure environment. And so it just allows for like a collaborative workflow for, for a research team. Here's just a basic screenshot of what data core looks like. And I'm gonna go over this in a little bit more detail during our live demo of, um, of the system. So the data core team consists of Peter Oxley, um, myself, um, Anna Proper, who's a data, ma uh, data manager specialist. Um, we're probably kind of the core members of the team. We also have John Ruffing and um, Lucy Wall. Lucy's our systems administrator, and John is um, basically the brains behind the architecture of data core. Um, we also have Michael Bales, who does a lot with the data exports. Anytime there's data that needs to leave the data core, he reviews it to make sure that um, there's no, no PHI or any other sensitive um, information or anything that can identify an individual before um, it leaves the data core. We also work, work cross um, departments with other ITS groups, such as ITS Ops, the Citrix team, and security. Um, some of the roles that we have on the data core team kind of um, we do we do work um, kind of prior to like even starting a project a lot of times a lot of times researchers are trying to obtain a data set which um, which requires a, a, some type of application for them to obtain it um, the data core team does assist in helping um, completing those um, security requirements and is able to answer those questions to reassure the data provider that data core meets um, the needs for storing this um, sensitive data. Uh, we gather you know, computing and storage requirements so that we can you know, maximize and effectively um, make sure your project is running smoothly and you know, you're able to get your work done. Uh, we set up your project environment we facilitate, you know, as I mentioned a couple of times, just data transfers of what's going in and out of the environment. Uh, we review and collect and help manage the project governance, making sure that, you know, governance is up to date, sending out reminders if uh, an IRB is or other governance um, is about to expire, just to make sure that your study can continue. Um, and we provide technical assistance and are just basically here to support the needs of a research team and a project to make sure they can get their work done. Uh, just a quick snapshot of where Data Core is today. Uh, we currently have 53 active projects inside Data Core. Um, we have 51 P PIs, the principal investigators have, um, have used Data Core services for their research um, projects. Uh, we've had 510 users kind of entered into the Data Core. Um, system. Um, they, they're probably not all active now because some of the projects have closed, but um, we do have um, many users that have, have used the, the service. And we've um, supported 135 projects um, since the inception of Data Core. Um, some of the notable kind of um, studies that we've been doing um, and data sets that we work with, um, we do a lot with um, the Insight CRN network. Um, it was uh, formerly CDRN and they have very large data sets and there are many projects um, using the, those data, that, that data set. Um, we do a lot with the Center for Medicare and Medicaid Services. Um, we house a lot of their data and there's multiple studies against them. Um, we've completed many security documents to obtain more data from them. Uh, one, another project that is kind of big right now is um, the Pediatric Epilepsy Project. Um, this particular project, we gather data from multiple sites. So we've had to facilitate data transfers from like the Children's Hospital of Colorado, like Cook's Children's Hospital, um, Montefiore, like just different, um, different organizations 
we've had to um, go in and facilitate a secure transfer of these data sets so that the study can be performed. Sparks is another data provider we work with. Uh, we also integrate with a lot highly with the research informatics team. Um, we provide like secure connections to Arch um, repo data repository, RDRs. And um, so um, we kind of provide that level of security if it's needed. Uh, one thing to note, um, if you're like completing a Cornell WCM IRB, um, there's questions that talk about where you're gonna store your data. Um, there is a preference to use data core for electronic public health or uh, private health information, patient health information, so. All right, um, I'm just gonna stop for a minute to see if there are any questions. Yeah, we did get move one. Into the demo. Uh, we got one, um, do residents and fellows from NYP need to go through the same seaweed creation process like Columbia or NYU? No, the NYP um, seaweed will work. They are integrated. Um, I think there's a setting that it, that needs to be set up for the NYP users, but NYP user, uh, we do have several NYP uh, users in the system without having to create a new seaweed. Okay. Oh, and we just got a couple more. Um, <clears throat> out of curiosity, how does DataCore compare and contrast with REDCap? Uh, in terms of like... Um, well, um, um, Bob, I don't know if you want to elaborate just a little more um, so that we can maybe help answer this question a little better. Um, we did have someone else ask in the meantime, um, if there is a cost to use the service? Um, there is a cost uh, associated with setting up a data core project. I'm gonna go over that in a little bit, a little bit later in the presentation. Okay, perfect. Um, so. I, I'll wait for Bob to see if he wants to um, elaborate a little more on um, what he's looking for in terms of comparing uh, data core to uh, REDCap. Uh, and then, oh, one more, just to confirm if we use sensitive data in data yes. core to create a data set that no longer has sensitive data, for example, aggregated, um, we are able to pull that data set from data core as long as it meets the DUA requirements of data provider? Absolutely, yeah. Um, that Most of the data experts we have are, it, it's derivative data and they're at the aggregate la 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 um, level. So, um, we're able to export. We just have to do a review of what's going out, but those those would be permitted um, to be exported out of the data core. Um, are there other data transfer methods than WSFTP? Um, well, normally we use FTP um, to import data. We also use transfer.while um, to, to um, whether we're transferring or getting files over to WCM or other ways. I believe actually share um, the, the OneDrive now has, if you're internal to WCM and you need to transfer data into the data core, we can take it from um, a, a, a OneDrive, like your personal OneDrive um, to, to access it that way. Or if it's on another file share on the network, we're able to transfer transfer it um, directly in. Um, is there a concern for Windows 2016 becoming outdated? That's a great question. Um, currently, um, I, I, I'll go over this in a little bit, um, kind of in our, our, our new features, but um, currently um, we have, um, uh, we have like the server version of 2016 on the as the operating system. Actually, that's kind of the one we, where ITS has the most licenses right now for the virtual machines. Um, so, um, so, I mean, we are always looking at, um, at making sure data core can, uh, can function or can operate with, with the latest tools or applications that need to, to run on it. We're getting a couple more questions, but I want you to go ahead and do the data core demo and then we'll, yeah. we'll continue with the questions after uh, you do your Sure. Demo. Okay. So, all right. So let me go ahead and, oops, sorry. 
All right, I'm going to go in and log into a data core project. Um, as I said, data core is accessed currently through my apps um, on the network. Um, here's just a screenshot, but let's let's go right into it. All right, so you just log in with your Wild Cornell credentials. All right, so right now you see um, the favorites tab. Um, for, for each data core project, um, there is an icon and you will only see the data core projects that you have been given access to. Um, I see a lot of them just because I manage the data core team. Um, so this, you would, um, this is kind of um, what you would see if you were to have a data core project. So I'm just gonna go into our test project because that doesn't contain any sensitive information that you guys can't see. So let's see. So to log in, you just kind of, um, you click on the icon and it opens up a Citrix gateway. Citrix is our gateway that kind of, um, kind of meets the requirements of some of our encryption levels that are required um, to, to get inside the um, secure environment. So let's get this. All right. All right, so here we again enter in our credentials. Sorry, type too fast. All right, um, it's going to connect you through remote desktop. And there is another, um, there is another level of in, um, authentication after you get inside the environment. We go, you get a warning, warning you that you're about to enter an environment that um, contains confidential data. Um, you click okay, and it will push a, a duo um, authentication onto your phone. And then you log into data core. So as you can see, the interface is you basically are being led into like a painted screen of a Windows environment. Like I'm on a Mac right now. And um, and what I inside the what I'm connecting to is a remote desktop into the Windows server. Um, so as I mentioned before, and everyone on a inside a data core project would see kind of this same interface. You would have access to your applications, whatever tools that you um, request for your project. We have a set of um, a set of uh, standard tools that are um, installed on in in the environment. Um, many researchers like to use SAS, um, R, and um, Anaconda and Python are kind of popular tools along with Stata, um, and we can customize that um, in in based on your project needs. Um, in addition to the applications, what, what you would see is your um, kind of your project directories. Um, so in this particular case, we have data core project one. Each um, project will have a directory structure similar to this. It would contain a source directory, a shared directory, and also a work area directory, a personal work area directory. I don't have a personal one set for me in this particular project, but um, in your own um, data core projects, there would be a directory set up for you. Um, the source in the shared directory can be seen by everyone in the, in the project. And, and, um, and again, you would only see these directories for the projects that you have access to. You don't see everyone else's project directories, but it's, it's all access controlled. So I'm just trying to, so that's kind of like, yeah, you can open, uh, a lot of folks use like R and R Studio is kind of popular, Stata and SAS. Um, um, all those tools are available. In addition, um, if, you're, if your research project um, requires the use of a database, um, we can create, give you um, kind of a connection to a database server if you're trying to run queries or you need that type of capability or that processing capability. So that's kind of like a, kind of a quick overview of what the environment looks out looks like. Okay, 
question. All right. All right, before, does anyone have any questions? Um, we did get a question. I, I hope I'm pronouncing this correctly. Um, is this different from OMOP, O-M-O-P? Um, well, the OMOP databases are kind of managed over in the, um, over by Research Informatics, that group. Um, this is a little bit different in the sense that um, the data sets are kind of usually provided by a, a different data provider. It could be, you know, it could be from CMS or, um, but th there is, it's, it's a little bit different. Um, and then we got a little more clarity about, um, well, let me ask about the request process. Um, what does the request process look like for adding open source software that is not currently present on DataCore? So, um, yeah, we, we get um, requests for, for um, those types of um, software um, installations all the time. You would just um, put a request um, to the DataCore team, and I can show you how to do that. Um, and a little bit later on, um, but there is a process to do so. And as long as it's open source, I mean, you can also have software installed that requires a license. I mean, you would have to be, provide the license or we would have to procure the license for you and there might be a cost associated with it. But if it's open source soft, software, um, we do have the ability to um, install it on in the environment. Um, we would have our system administrator who has those access that access to be able to um, grab it from the open source, like off the internet or wherever the, the downloadable files are. All right, I'll just do one I'm more so that you can it. go on with your demo. Um, in terms of the okay. right now, we've got a little more um, specificity in one of the questions. Um, does data core include um, creation and use of data collection instruments, such as survey questionnaires like REDCap? And are there differences from REDCap in terms of options for organizing and analyzing data? Hmm. No, I, I don't think I have an answer for that, but I will definitely take that back and try to find a little bit more, um, yeah, kind of find a little bit more, a more clearer answer on that. So yeah, no problem. I'll send you the questions um, after this. So. Sure. All right. Um, all right, I'm going to keep. I'm going to continue on. Is that sound yeah? Good? Go ahead. All right. So, um, so you have a project that you think um, Data Core might um, be the right environment for you to pursue. So, I'm going to go over the process of requesting a new Data Core project. Uh, so, the types of um, projects that we see the most are faculty. Oops, sorry faculty research projects. Um, those are basically initiated through like a, a WCM IRB protocol. There's data governance associated with it. Um, and, um, and those are, I would say, probably about 90% of the projects that we host in Data Core. Uh, we also um, have, have student capstone projects inside of Data Core. If there's a uh, a student that's working on something with a with a mentor or something we can we we have those type of projects we also support classroom projects if there's a classroom that's um, doing data analysis on a on a secure data set um, for for the classwork um, we've um, supported those projects um, and again we also provide Data course often used for um, providing secure access to Arch and um, some of their data repositories. So, um, so somebody had mentioned about rates. Um, the rates for using um, Data Core services can are listed on our ITS service catalog page, and I'm just going to go ahead and bring that up just so you know where to look. The link is here, but if you just go up to um, sorry. Oops. Just trying. Okay. If you go to um, just kind of the ITS um, webpage and search data catalog, skip. Okay. You 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 will bring you to kind of our um, our site here um, on the 
on the service catalog. Um, the rates are listed below. There are basically three main components um, of cost associated with the data core project. Um, first is the number of users. Um, we, we do um, charge um, based on user. However, um, it's like kind of a, a sliding scale um, where the more users you, ha you have, um, the less expensive it can it, it become. So for example, for like classroom users, after the fifth user, it's just a nominal cost to add additional users. Um, kind of the point of the service is that we need to cover the cost for the machines and the computing and the storage. Um, and, and we're not trying to like, you know, charge excessive amounts for being able to provide the service. Um, in addition to the number of users, there are storage costs. Um, speaking of storage, um, there's backups, uh, um, the, the, the file shares are backed up on a regular basis. So, um, so that, that is kind of part of um, kind of when, when you're working inside the environment, you, you can know that you can, there are backups in case something happens and you need to retrieve something earlier that you thought you might have removed. Um, the other piece of it is software. Um, we do offer institutional volume discounts on a lot of the um, software packages like SAS and Stata, um, and there there are others too. I mean, just inquire if there's a if there's a software that you're interested in using. We can see if we can get the volume discount and get it um, loaded on, in a server environment so that most multiple users can use it. So. And then if there's other, like if you are working with a, a, a project that requires more computing or you need extra storage, we, again, we can scale it to whatever project um, needs that you have. Um, and if you need a database uh, to connect to a database server, there is um, cost associated with that. Um, if you're about to start a data core project and you're thinking, how much is this gonna cost? Um, just reach out to the data core team and we can provide a cost quote um, before to, for you to get an idea of how how much it would um, be to uh, run a run a project inside Data Core. So um, we good. Okay. So when you're ready to start a Data Core project, there is an onboarding form that can be found in um, my in the service catalog, if you go under my help desk and you search for the data core onboarding request, this form basically gathers all the requirements for your data core project. I think I have it up somewhere. So this is what the form looks like. Um, again, it just, it captures basic information that we need to um, start up your project. You know, what kind of project you're, you're working on, what kind of CPU and RAM, the software you need. Um, if you're if you're looking for an environment, a computing and storage environment that isn't um, doesn't contain sensitive data, but you're just looking for like um, for like the computing resources, we we do have some servers that are open. Um, so if if you have a project that is, doesn't fall in, uh, we're, our service is mainly used for um, sensitive data sets. However, if you have a project that doesn't require it and you're looking, we, we can provide that service also. All right, and here. Um, after you complete this onboarding form, a member of the data core team will reach back out to you just to verify the um, project details. And then we will start working on setting up your environment. We'll collect governance, we'll collect you know, data core use agreements. Um, there's a process involved with setting up the environment. It, it takes about two weeks to get a um, data core environment pure, um, fully set up. Um, and we'll also work with you to transfer the data into the data core um, once the environment is set up. So. All right. Are there any questions um, on the onboarding of a new project? I didn't see one about onboarding. Um, we did get a question about, um, and this may have, uh, you may have shown this on the site with the list of applications, but um, is there a list of software available by default on the computing environment? 
um, I believe it is listed on our, um, in the ITS um, page, on the data core page, mm -hmm. has a list of the software that's available. So, and that I mean, was, and, and just to answer um, D, uh, they asked about the recording being available later. Yes, I'll, I'll have it sent out to everybody later today, just in case anybody was late to the session. <laughs> that's it. Right. Right. So after your data core project's been set up, um, you you would probably oftentimes you'll need to request changes made or data imported and exported. The process to reach out to the data core team is managed through the data core work request form. Um, and I'll bring that up real quick. So it, So this is the data core work request. Again, it's just found under the, in, in ServiceNow in, in my help desk. And here you would request whether you need data import it, data export it, whether you need to add new users to your data core project or remove users, um, installing software or any other communication that you need to contact the data core team, you can submit a request through, um, through, through this form. All right, right now I'm gonna go over kind of some of the things that are um, kind of our newest features and the things that we're um, working on to move data core kind of um, to grow our service and to, to all, we're always looking to improve it and, and make it better. So uh, one of the new features that we have is um, a self-service import. Um, again, if governance allows, like previously everything going in and, and out of the data core was managed through the data core team. Um, we, we do our best to get it turned it around as quick, quick as you can so that um, you can get working. But um, one of the things that we were able to provide um, that would still meet like security requirements is the self-service import. So um, depending on the project, we have the ability to allow users to import data directly into their data core environment through a, a, through a secure FTP kind of transfer mechanism. Um, so that was kind of new. Um, this is only for imports. Again, exports, we are a little bit more concerned about because um, there are strict rules with disseminating data and distributing data. Um, and we just wanna make sure that anything that comes out of the data core is allowed to be um, transferred out. Um, one, of, one of the new features that we have within data core is we recently acquired um, two GPU servers. So we have um, just spun up a, some new projects that are that is using this GPU capability. So if you have a research project that deals with, um, that needs this type of computation with lots of, maybe a lot of graphics or you need the, the, the ability to, to process, we, we do have those available. Um, one of the things that one of our previous enhancements was the ability to um, import and load R packages um, directly into your environment. And before, again, you had to kind of go through the data core team, but we were able to create a CRAN repository so that users can import whatever, whichever R packages they, they need it. And we're looking to do that for the Python repository too. And I think somebody was mentioning about um, what happens about the Windows 2016. One of the things, um, newest things that we're kind of exploring is um, using cloud computing services, um, AWS um, for data core projects. Um, so we're still in the very early stages of that. And um, we know that you know, cloud computing is the direction that, um, that we're heading. And we're just making sure that this environment can meet all our security requirements and, and allow us to operate um, properly. So, um, so I'm gonna end with this, which is the data catalog. Sorry. Um, so after having hosted many data core projects over the years, um, we, we came to recognize that um, there are, um, we, we've been, WCM has been working with lots of various data sets and we found it that it would be valuable to be able to um, kind of create a repository or a catalog to allow um, the community to know what research data sets are available. Um, so one of the things that is in a work in progress 
um, is creating this data catalog of kind of what data sets um, are is available to um, researchers. Um, it doesn't con this catalog doesn't contain the data sets itself, but just um, the descriptions and the metadata for each data set and how to how you can go about obtaining it. And so um, I'm going to direct you over to the Data Core website, which will be handy to know, um, where you can access the data catalog and just other things associated with Data Core. All right. Here you go. Okay. Pull that up. Okay. So this is the Data Core kind of. Um, homepage, which is just datacore.wa.cornell.edu. Um, you have to be on the network to be able to access this, this site. So um, I'm specifically going to point out the data catalog right now. And this is, uh, again, um, just something new and a work in progress. And here um, you can see some of the data sets that, um, that we've started to populate the catalog with. So this is, yeah, it kind of, it, it gives you like the point of contact and um, this might just be helpful for you to know if you're doing a study to see what else has already been done um, at the community. So, and um, I believe- Can I just ask uh, if anybody can have access to data in that catalog? Um, well, you have, there are certain restrictions. Um, there are, there is contact information on how to obtain the, the data set. Um, if you were to go into the catalog itself, it will provide like additional information, like on how to, um, on, on, yeah, you would you would just probably contact the person who owns the data set um, to to see how you can gain access to it. All right, and then I, I will, the presentation is going to be sent out. So here are all the links that went went we went over during the presentation. So. Um, I think that concludes my formal part of the presentation, but if we have some additional questions, I'm happy to stay on and answer them. Um, I see one more. Um, somebody uh, is not familiar with REDCap or OMOP, um, but they, they do reporting for providers in the Department of Surgeries. So would, um, you know, DataCore, OMOP, and REDCap, do they all work hand in hand? Um, it depends on the scenario. I mean, OMOT <clears throat> is kind of under the research informatics umbrella. Um, there's times where you would need the connection. Um, I think it just would kind of depend on on what the requirement is for your study or or what you need to need it for. Um, data core essentially is just the environment for you to like a secure environment that uh, is available to use. Um, for for set for for studies and um, we have a question. Uh, do you have more details on the upcoming GPU systems? What type of GPUs would be available? And is there any jobs? Is there a job scheduler for these systems? There is. We're actually we are just starting our kind of our inaugural GPU projects um, and setting up the job scheduler on the GPU nodes. Um, so yeah, I, I'd be happy to re, uh, talk more about it online if, if, if you have a specific need for, for GPU usage. So, so yeah, they're, they're currently being set up and, and being used, so. Um, I don't see more questions, but um, so what I'll do is I'll wrap this up. Um, I'll email everybody out um, the slide deck. I'll have the useful links and I'll have the recording of the session later today. Um, and then I'll also include, um, you know, um, I'll, I'll make sure Alice is copied. If you guys have questions, you know, just reply back to the email um, and, you know, uh, you know, feel free to look at all of these links to, to get more information or use the forms um, to to request, um, you know, assistance with data core. 
Um, but if, but um, it looks like that's it uh, in terms of questions. So thank you so much, Alice, um, for hosting the session. Um, we really appreciate you telling us a bit more about it. Sure, thank you for having us. Yeah, and everyone, please stay warm. Uh, <laughs> I don't know if you can hear the snow yeah. behind me. But <laughs> um, it's kind of crazy out there. So stay safe, stay warm. Um, and I'll make sure to contact you all later today uh, with the uh, uh, data core information. Have a great day, everyone. Great, thank you.